Hello and welcome to this special bulletin brought to you by Studio Production. I'm Tash Lewis. And I'm Zi Zhou. Thank you for joining us. There are calls tonight for a major overhaul of Victoria's first care system. Welfare agencies want young people to be able to stay in first homes until the age of 21, a move they say will reduce youth homelessness. Tash Lewis reports. When it comes to a standard of care, Victoria's foster care system sets a high benchmark. However, for children being cared for under the foster system, they face little to no support as soon as they turn 18. The Foster Care Association of Victoria stresses the need for care up to the age of 21 and pushes for a system reform. If we support children post 18, young people in care, um, we'll be saving money on health and mental health, on um, homelessness services. The Australian Institute of Health and Welfare expressed that 40% of young people who leave out of home care experience a degree of homelessness within the first 12 months. For foster carers like Kate, continuing to care for young people over the age of 18 calls on the government to implement further reimbursements. I think that's essential. We just know with my own children that they need support after 18. Compared to last year, this year's annual report shows a 7% increase of children living in out-of-home care. So absolutely we need more carers, it's so that we can do the best we can do for um, every child coming into care. The Andrews Labor government stresses the need for more individuals and families to open up their homes, encouraging all Victorians to seriously consider fostering children. It's a challenging yet rewarding task caring for children who've had a difficult start of life. So don't just sit around talking about it, do it. There are high hopes to see reimbursements for foster care re-evaluated in next year's budget. Tash Lewis reporting for Mojo. Melbourne students showed their support for marriage equality at the National Student Day of Action Rally, just one day after postal survey were sent out across the nation. Members from Monash University, Army IT and Black Bullets for Marriage Equality braved the rain with a strong message. The National Tertiary Education Union says the biggest issue with the postal vote is ensuring people actually enroll to vote. A lot of young people have not been enrolled to vote before, so it's very important to mobilise them to get enrolled. About 90,000 people have added their names to the electoral roll since the federal government announced the controversial plebiscite. The Melbourne Fringe Festival is underway and one artist is literally using the city as his canvas. Landscape artist Baden Johnson is transforming the exteriors of tired city buildings and giving city dwellers a window into the Australian outback. Joy Joshi met him. The lost Australian landscape artist Baden Johnson is bringing the rural landscape into urban spaces. As part of the Melbourne Fringe Festival, he's putting up a series of spray-painted base stops in the street art laneways of Melbourne. As an artist, we've got a great tradition in this country of landscape painting. So on some level of that artistic level, I want to continue that tradition. But then I want to bring it into a 21st century context, which is urban art, street art. These base stops are of real places, many of which were a part of Baden's childhood. Terang, Baxter and Tainong, just to name a few. Baden believes these paintings remind the city dwellers of what lies beyond the city high-rise. Businesses are slowly closing. It's, I mean, it's not a dying town, but there are other towns out there which are, you know, basically Australians are moving out of those little rural areas and moving into these bigger cities. His new project includes background music, which the viewer can tune into using a barcode. The new epoch art that Baden and I are working on here was invented in the early 1960s. For anyone passing by, they can enjoy the modern piece of art with a musical composition as well. Thanks to Wade, it's no longer just a treat for your eyes. A barcode reader, those phones have them. Um, and that will take you to a link on SoundCloud where the music that's been written for the piece should start playing. Baden's art is available to public at North Melbourne's Lulu Cafe and Gallery. Joy Joshi for Mojo TV. St John's Ambulance is on a crusade to turn everyday Australians into lifesavers through basic first aid skills. To mark World First Aid Day, the Victorian branch of St John's opened its training centres to the public, offering a potentially life-saving CPR course. It takes just 30 minutes. A worrying 43% of Victorians don't have any first aid training. Only 21% um, of people um, are confident uh, to provide first aid uh, in an emergency situation. 
Every minute that passes without CPR for a person in need greatly reduces their chance of survival. The 2017 Australian Show Jumping Championships have begun at Werribee Park National Equestrian Centre. Event Director Mark Hopkinson says the championships are the most prestigious event on the Australian calendar. This year is our biggest effort. We have five rings operating over five days, close to 700 horses here. Prize money of $150,000. Uh, the grand final is on Sunday where children, junior uh, and senior riders and a young rider group as well will determine the Australian Championship. This year's championship is the 56th anniversary of the event. That's all we have time for during this special presentation from the Monash Media Lab. Please join us again next time. Good night. Good night.